In this tutorial, we'll look at how to create responsive equal height cards with HTML and CSS with Flexbox. All right, so I just have an HTML boilerplate here linking to my style sheet, which is currently empty. So we just have a blank page. So we're gonna create three cards and then we'll talk about the layout and how to make it responsive. So we're gonna have card and I'll just create one card and then we can duplicate it. So we're gonna have some kind of heading, right? Maybe bike one. Let's say we have a, a collection of cards for some kind of bike. Maybe you're selling bikes and some text here, some description perhaps. And I'll just use lorem ipsum so I can write lorem and then let's say 15 words or something like that. I can press alt Z so that it actually wraps onto a new line so that we don't get that horizontal scroll bar. And let's say we also have some kind of button um, with, you know, purchase. Okay, so that's gonna be one card. Let's say we have three of them. So I'm just gonna duplicate it. This is gonna be bike two and bike three. Now let's say that we have some images for each of them, right? Because that's quite common in um, cards. You can go to unsplash.com. You can find all sorts of beautiful images. I found three bikes. So I'm just gonna copy their image address and I'm gonna add it as an image um, in those cards as well. So I'm just gonna paste the URL. Um, Alt is just gonna be bike and I'll just copy this as well. Bike two, bike three. I need to change the URL here. Let's see. And the last one. Okay, so I'm going to save here. I'm going to see what we have. It's going to be one big mess. Yeah, because of the images. I'm going to close the images here. All right. So um, let's actually select all of this in the CSS. Let's start there. So we have a cart. And actually, I didn't give these images a class. Let's quickly do that. IMG, IMG, and IMG. So we can just select everything here. Image, heading, description and button and i also want to select the body because let's add a background color for example like let's say ls blue let's see if that looks good i'm going to refresh well we actually don't see it because these images are so big so let's just make these images a bit smaller so let's just make them something like uh you know 40 by 40. okay this may be a little bit too small let's make it 100 and let me zoom in a little bit actually now, when you're working with images and you change their height and width, usually it's a good idea to use object fit cover so that you so that you keep respecting their aspect ratio, right? Because they can sort of they can start looking a bit um, uh, distorted if you change the the height and width. Now, one of the things that we can see here is there is sort of like a a white uh, border around everything, and actually, um, what happens is that browsers they add some default styling, so they add some padding to the body, for example. And they also add padding and margin to other elements. So typically what people do is you want to start from a clean slate. So you have a CSS reset. So you can use the universal selector to select all elements. And then we can just remove all margin, all padding. And typically people also set the box sizing property to border box. Right, so this is a very typical CSS reset. You don't have to understand this last one. This is actually very advanced. It's the most difficult property in CSS. I have a separate video on that. If I do this and refresh, you can see that white border is gone. Let's give these cards a background color of white. And let's give them a bit of a border radius. Let's say five pixels. And let's also give them, give them a bit of a box shadow. So zero pixels, horizontal offset, maybe something like three pixels, uh, vertical offset, three pixel blur. And then it's going to be black with 15% opacity. Okay, so now what we're going to do, I'm going to close these cards here because it's a lot of HTML, takes up a lot of space. What we're going to do is we're going to put them in a container element and that's going to be the flex container because we're going to use Flexbox here. So I'm going to put them in the container and then I'm going to select that container element. And the only thing we have to do to make this a flex container is use display flex. And the default situation, the, the, the default layout in Flexbox is that they're going to sit horizontally next to each other, right? So this is the default layout. And now we have unlocked, so to speak, the Flexbox functionalities. And actually, it's really important that you have mastered Flexbox if you want to work as a web developer, especially with the front end. Um, it's one of the most uh, crucial concepts to know. And there are other concepts in CSS that you have to know as well, like CSS grid, animations, and transitions. I have a whole course in CSS. I highly recommend you check it out if you want to take it to a professional level. It only takes a couple of hours, but it will benefit you for the rest of your career. Okay, 
Now, right now, these cards uh, take the entire width, right? So usually we want to restrain the width a little bit. So we can just add some padding or margin or max width actually to the container. So we can say the container should be at most, let's say uh, 1150 pixels, 1150 pixels at most. That will restrain the width a little bit. And actually, I'm not sure if everything went all right here. So I'm gonna double check here if something went wrong. So the max width, I'm, I'm zoomed in quite a bit here. So let's see max width. I'm gonna expand it a little bit more. Yeah, so it's working here. So um, it's because I'm zoomed in that we don't properly see it. So you know what? I'm just gonna make this a little bit less, uh, 850 pixels. And actually, if you're coding along with me, you might, be, you might get confused. So I will actually just do it like this and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. So, we have restrained the width of this container element now, but we actually want to center everything. So you can just use, this is no Flexbox, right? This is all outside of Flexbox. You can just use a maximum width and then margin zero pixels on top and bottom, but then you can use auto on the right and left side and that will center everything, right? Let's also add some padding to the top of the body so it's not sitting against the top. Um, let's just add something like 300 pixels, uh, maybe a little bit less. All right, so this is what we have so far. So for, let's actually add some space between them. Let's start there. So what we can do in Flexbox is you can use column gap, right? So you, in the past people used margin, but these days it's better to use column gap. Let's try 20 pixels, all right. And I also don't like, I don't really like the font here. So I'm quickly gonna go to fonts Google to use a different font. I like inter or Roboto, all of them are fine with me. Let's use Roboto here. And I'm recording a video, so it's gonna be a bit slow. Okay, so here's Roboto. I can pick the um, the font weights that I want. And actually, I already looked at this before, so it actually already cached or remembered this. So you can pick the font weights and it will give you the um, the links to include. I'm just gonna copy this. And actually, um, it's doing the other fonts as well. Ah, okay. Yeah, so I, I looked at some other fonts as well before recording this video. So it's included those. So I just removed them. So you can just go to in the in head. Just copy and paste it. I'm gonna hold Shift Alt F to format everything nicely, and then we can just use font family on the body element, and everything else will inherit this font family. So if I now save and refresh, we should see a better font. Yes. Okay. So let's see what we can improve in these cards. So let's add some padding in these cards, and let me make this a bit smaller. And I'm actually just gonna use a live server, so I don't have to keep refreshing. So I'm using an extension here in Visual Studio Code called Live Server. I can click on go live and it will find the HTML file and it will put it on a live server. What this will do is um, when it when it detects a change, it will automatically refresh the page. So we don't have to keep refreshing. So let's add some padding to these cards. Let's add something like uh, 20 pixels on top and bottom. And then I like it to do it a little bit more on this on the left and right side. So then we have this. Now we also want to add some margin, right? So the heading sh should maybe get some margin on top and bottom, both. So we can say uh, something like 10 pixels on the top, zero pixels on right and left sides, and then 20 pixels on the bottom. And actually let's reverse that. I think it should, uh, oh no, it's doing, uh, it looks pretty good. Let's make it 15. And let's give the description some padding on the bottom as well. So that the, the button is not sitting right against it. Now you can see these buttons, they have some default styling as well, right? So this is also coming from the browser. These buttons typically we also want to reset at least some of their properties. So we don't want a border, for example. So you can say border none, or initial, meaning just like the value from the specification of CSS, which is no border. We can also remove the background. And um, let's see. So the, the text in the button seems to be a bit of a different font. So let's actually double check. There are some elements in HTML that do, that do not automatically inherit the font. So for example, input elements, um, they don't automatically inherit the font. So I want to double check whether that's the case for button as well, because it looks a bit different, but maybe I'm mistaken. Yeah, so the font family is actually Arial. So we actually want to force all the font properties to be inherited. So I'm going to say button font inherit. Okay, let's quickly style that button, those buttons. So we can just give it a background color of, let's say, uh, some kind of blue, perhaps. Let's see, something like that. Just any color will do. And we'll make it a, a white color. We'll add some padding. And a border radius. And let's actually make them pill-shaped. Pill-shaped. So just add a very large border radius. Okay. And I will decrease the font size a little bit to 12 pixels. 
All right, so this is already looking better. Now we can continue starting this, right? But we're, we're not really here for that. We are here mostly for the layout. So what's going to happen is that some of these cards are going to have more content than the other ones. For example, if we go into uh, the first uh, card here, if I just duplicate this description so that it has more content and then save, you're going to see that now this, is, this one is uh, taller. And you can see because we're using Flexbox, these other ones actually automatically uh, will stretch as well. Because when you're using Flexbox, the container display flex, what it will do is it will sit, it will set those flex items horizontally next to each other, but vertically they will be stretched, right? So if one of these one of these becomes bigger, the the height of that um, flex container or that row becomes bigger and since they're stretched they will automatically become bigger as well now you probably want these buttons to sit at the bottom though right so um, one way to do that is with flexbox again right so you can nest flex boxes that's no problem actually works as expected so these buttons you have to identify the parent element so we have a button and the parent element is this card so we're going to make this a flex container right it can be a flex item but it itself can also be a flex container in relation to its own child elements so the default layout is again this horizontal layout we don't want that in this case we want to keep that vertical flow so you can we can change flex direction to column and now what we get is the, the previous flow but remember those flex items get stretched and actually this time they get stretched horizontally because we're using flex direction column and actually i kind of like that i don't mind these buttons being stretched here but you could restrain the width by setting a width property on these buttons right with you know 100 pixels or something like that now the reason we're doing this is so now we can push these buttons to the bottom actually. So what you can do is you can use margin auto, margin top auto. In Flexbox this has special behavior. So we're going to add as much margin to this button as possible, which will push itself downwards. Right? So now you're always going to have that equalized uh, button um, in these cards. Right? So this is one way to make it uh, responsive, you could say. Okay, now what's going to happen is that on smaller viewports, let's talk about that. So at some point we're going to get into issues here, right? And actually let's talk about how we we actually want to we actually want to prevent this from sitting against the viewport. How do you solve that? Well, that's actually a very common issue. So this container has a maximum width, but we can also add some padding. So we can say zero pixels on top and bottom. Maybe we want something like 30 pixels on the right and left side. So when you do that, now when the viewport becomes smaller, it will keep that padding, right? So you're not gonna have those cards sit right against the edge. Now you can already see what's gonna go, ha what's gonna happen here. It's gonna get more cramped and eventually it's gonna, it's, it's just gonna look terrible, right? So in the real world, what you want is that on, on the smaller devices, eventually this card should move to the other row, right? So on, like it should wrap onto a new line so that these two then get a little bit more space again on this line. And maybe this one should stretch all the way. And you don't even need media queries for this. So in Flexbox, you can already do this very easily. So what you can do is um, you have to make it explicit that you want these flex items to wrap or at least allow them to wrap. Right? That, that doesn't happen automatically. Um, and then we can give each card a, a, um, a proportion that they should take up of the space available. So we can, we can select those cards individually. So we can say the card that is uh, first of its of its type and of type number one card number two and card number three and we can say we can use the flex property so we can say they all should be equally big so we they all should get a portion or proportion of one as long as the number is the same they will all get um well the same width right so that's that's what we have right now now the cool thing is that maybe you want for example the second one to be twice as big right so here you can sort of size them as well and you can create very interesting layouts right because this one now gets two portions of the available space which is which, which means it's going to be twice as big as this one right and it's also going to be twice as big as this one because this one also gets only one right so you can play with the portions like that but let's keep them equal now what we want is that at some point they wrap onto a new line and actually, we, so we, we, we kind of want to force them to have some kind of minimum width. And if that minimum width is not possible anymore, they should wrap onto a new line. So you, that's actually something you can do with, with flex basis. And that's, this flex property is actually a shorthand. So it's doing flex grow, but also flex basis. So maybe we want them to be at least 250 pixels in size. You can just add that here. So now if we make it smaller and smaller, at some point... Um, Right? At some point, these cards cannot be 250 pixels anymore. And at that point, what's going to happen is the other one is going to wrap onto a new line. right? And actually, we want some space uh, you know, here as well. So we have column gap. right? That's the vertical column. We also have row gap. 
and maybe this should be a little bit bigger right so that's a row gap and actually let's also add some padding on the bottom here so we can scroll down so just padding on top and bottom of 100 pixels and zero on left and right side right so what we have now actually let's make this a little bit less 50 pixels right so what we have now is actually already a very interesting and advanced layout and you don't even need media queries this is all done with flexbox and what's going to happen now of course we we are going to keep it smaller we're going to make it smaller and smaller so eventually on mobile for example there's not going to be enough space anymore to be 250 pixels width here for these two so what's going to happen at some point is that it's going to be another wrapping right so now this one wraps onto a new line as well right so now you get a very uh solid responsive layout and these cards are all all going to be equally big they're going to have an equal height this is probably what you're looking for right so we can make it more sophisticated with the image and stuff like that but the layout is what counts here and um, this is really you know modern really nice layout i think very easy to create with flexbox so make sure that you master flexbox and also css grid check out the link in this in the description if you want to take your css to that professional level by the way, if this was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Also, check out my courses on CSS and JavaScript if you want to take those skills to an advanced level. Because in there, we will build some beautiful real-world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master CSS or JavaScript. And I will also release other courses soon like React and Node.js. So if you want to be notified, then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter. You can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.